What's going on, y'all? Self Out Junction. We got a very special guest today. We have Tony in the building. He is a magician, correct? That is correct. Okay. Now, can you tell, for those who don't know you, can you tell them about yourself, who you are, what you do, things like that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so yeah, my name is Tony. It's uh, Tony Jones. I am a professional close-up magician. Okay. Um, you know, I do, I do, I do a lot of close-up magic. Mm-hmm. Um, which differs from stage magic in the sense of, you know what I mean? Stage is, you know, grand illusion, all right. that fun stuff. Theaters of, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hundred. Uh, close up magic is, it's a little bit more personal, intimate. Um, it's more the stuff really that you're seeing on TV nowadays, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. With as much as I hate to mention, you know, the popularity of Chris Angel a couple of years ago, right, you know, right. you have David Blaine. Um, mm-hmm. And then I think on AGT, uh, just recently, there was Shin Lim who won uh, America's Got Talent uh, by doing close-up magic that was like projected on uh, giant uh, uh, like a screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. like okay. like LED boards, uh, video screens. That way, okay. uh, like a, a theater of two thousand could see it. Impressive. So, yeah. Okay. So, and I'm glad you explained the difference between the magic because I was going to ask you that because I was because you said close-up magic. I was I was assuming that it's up close, personal. Mm-hmm. You're showing me things like up close yeah. as opposed to like stage magic now and you, and you did miss some chris chris angel so what kind of got you into doing magic like was it watching things on tv like chris angel or seeing david blaine or was it just something that you had a, a fixation for from a young age yeah yeah absolutely so um so they actually like those two household names came they came a little bit later like in my, in okay. my interest of magic you know I was, I was a little bit older at that point so i started when I was seven, all right, because I went to I went to Las Vegas and mm-hmm. I saw a magician and I thought I thought it was the coolest thing. Okay, um, his name was Rick Thomas and he doesn't even really do he doesn't do a lot of stuff these days. I mean, at least I can't say that I've seen him doing anything these days. He might right. be doing something somewhere, but okay. Um, I just remember being a kid and watching this dude producing these tigers and thinking to myself as a kid, a child's mind, like I want to fool the adults like this guy. Mm. So. Um, so I got like a magic kit for my next Christmas. Okay. And I started playing with it just like anybody else would. And it all kind of went from there. Okay. When was when was your first like, I got this person? Like, what what was that moment for you where you were like, this is definitely what I love to do? Because like, obviously you practice it so much that it becomes second nature and you and you, you become better at it. Yeah. What was your first moment where you actually tricked somebody and had them like, what the fuck is going on? Um... <laughs> You want the real first moment, or I think I, th- I think the second I opened that magic kit, I tried to show my mom a trick, and I again I was so young and mm-hmm. uh, it, it was horrible, but you know <laughs> she was still like, "Oh, you got me." So oh, okay, so she did a little anyway, fake one. I guess that doesn't count. Yeah. So right. um, oh god, I don't know. I've, yeah, first real moment. I think it was I think it was probably probably in elementary school. Yeah, pr- okay. probably no 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 yeah middle school. Mid, yeah, middle school. Middle school is really when I started kind of like putting everything out, you know, wanting mm-hmm. wanting to share my magic with people because the reason, and this is like, you know, low-key, one of the reasons why magic interests me so much as a, a child was because I, I felt weird about connecting with people. And mm-hmm. magic is such a perfect icebreaker to connect with people. You could be in a room with just you and a person you've never met and it's it's just a perfect icebreaker hey you so. want to see some magic exactly. <laughs> just sitting there across the room like, exactly sure <laughs> let me see some exactly. no one's gonna say no to that <laughs> right right <laughs> so. so so speaking of magic i believe there's some uh some tricks that you're gonna show the audience um so that way they can kind of see a little bit about what you do yep yep absolutely yep we're gonna run through a couple things so we're gonna do something cool and it's hopefully gonna be something that you've never seen before okay right? Uh, so we have a deck and, and we, we've done a couple other things mm-hmm. before the cameras are rolling. Um, so you know that the cards are in no order at this point, but Correct. I do want everybody else to know. So I'll give them another one of those quick shuffles. All right. Looks something like this. It's always fun getting flashy. <laughs> All right. So, um, I'm going to riffle down and I'm going to have you say that we're just going to say stop wherever you want. All right. Okay. Stop. Right there. Yep. Cool. And reach me around quickly. Cool. You're going to look at it. Show sure. the camera. Cool. And I'm going to cut the pack and we're going to do four separate piles. All right? Okay. And I'm going to try to do something that hopefully you've never seen before. Okay. All right? I'm going to shuffle with the face up cards into the face down cards. All right? And that looks something like this. See how close to perfect I can get it. All right. So it's not there. It's not perfect. But it's close. It it's should perfect be one, 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 one. Oh, okay. Ah, I got you. Almost. So we can, right there, right there. It's fine. 
All right, so that's one, all right? I just wanted to show that they genuinely need to shuffle the face. I'm gonna face down. Here's two. All right, that's two. And three looks something like this. Boom. All right, so the cards at this point, you know, really are shuffled. All right, face in the face down. It's a big mess. Okay. All right, so don't tell me the card. Uh, sure, but give me a hint. What was, what was just the suit? Clubs, hearts, spades, or diamonds? Spades. <laughs> it was a spades? Yeah. We might have started over. Um, actually, you know what? No, it's fine. Here, we'll do this. If I snap, the entire pack fixes itself. Like, I never shuffled it to begin with. Okay. That'd be a damn good trick. Yeah, I feel like be. you know that I could do that at this point. I do. I can't. I'm not that good. Oh, right, but if, I, if, I, if I snap with the other hand, there. Okay. The entire pack just fixed itself except for one suit. You said it was spades? Yes. Spades. Look at this. Not just there. Look. But in order. <laughs> Yo, get out of here. I what? Ace. Look, the two, the three, the four, the five, the... I'm missing a card. Look, I have the seven, the eight, the nine, the ten, the jack, the queen, the king. One card I'm missing right here. I can assume that you have the six of spades. Yes. Let me see it. Boom. <laughs> it's a cool card trick. How did you do that? <laughs> Can't give away your tricks. I Very think. carefully. That's crazy. Oh, my God, dude. Do I move this closer? I don't know what's going on. No, no it's you, you can't hear you. I have. I turned the sensitivity up, so... Oh, okay, cool, 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 good. All right, so um, I'm hoping that everybody at home is going to be able to see what's going on with this. I know I'm a little bit further back. I think it'll be fine now. All right? Yeah, no, should be good. So the idea is we have three silver coins, mm -hmm. all right? They're Morgan dollars, all right? I sit here and give you a whole history lesson, but uh, we'll save it. Uh, so the idea is we have three. All right, hands are clean. All right, hands are clean. I'm not, like, hiding anything out on you. Right. Um, here's what we're going to do. We have the three, the nothing, and it looks like this. Watch. Look, we're going to go one, two... Three like that, and you want to shoot across. <laughs> now that's one. That is fucking and it's crazy. quick. All right, so we'll do it again. Again, we have the one, the two, yep. the two, the one. I won't let you see it, but I'll let you hear it this time. So one, two, two, one. Listen. Did you hear? <laughs> Man, Three's the best. I don't understand what's going on. You can see the last one go from hand to hand. Watch. Look. One, two. Here it goes. Three. It's a dumb joke, don't Yeah, no. No laugh. No laugh out of you. Look, we have these three. If I reach out here like this over by the mic, we use this one. These two, I'm just going to give it a pop. Here it goes. One, two, look. Three, and that's something we one, two, three old solid pieces of silver. Now, um, I think it was sixth grade. That last little pop thing, I know everybody saw that and wants to kind of figure out how it's done. I'll probably rewind it 20 times. I'll, I'll just show it to you. <laughs> I'll show it to you. All right? It looks like this. So when okay. one goes down like that, that's gravity. What most people never learn is that if you drop a coin like that, you can actually rewind the motion of the hands and get it to fall back up, <laughs> which is nuts here. Look, we'll do it again. Again, you rewind that motion. The cool thing is, um, well, if you take it, blow, it's gone. This is beyond me, man. <laughs> what? How many coins? You, you have to have more than three coins on each you. sleeve. Huh? <laughs> oh, okay. We do. <laughs> You're a funny guy, man. That's impressive. <laughs> That's impressive. Thank you. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's do um, let's do let's do one more thing. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a uh, we're gonna do a quick sobriety test. Okay. All right, just to make sure we're good for the interview. Okay. <laughs> I, I feel uh, good. You feel good? I, I feel good. Okay. All right, Excellent. So so we could call, I mean we could call it sobriety test, memory test, whatever you want to do. Okay. All right. Sweet. And this is gonna be I'm I'm gonna play this for you, mm -hmm. right? Because you've never seen this before. Correct. Um, but I also I also want the people at home to be able to see what's going on as well. All right. So I have a couple of cards. All right, and I'm gonna show them. Um, I'm gonna show them to you guys, and I want um. I want everybody to remember as much as you can about them. I'm going to give you like five seconds. Okay. okay. All right, here we go. I think that's enough time. Do you got it? Yep. You think you have everything? Yeah. Cool. First question. Okay. How many cards am I holding in my hand? Four. Good. If you don't get the first question right, the rest of the trick's a mess. All right. The next question is, uh, well, I had a pair of eights. You remember that? Correct. Cool. There was a red eight and there was a black eight. Mm -hmm. Was the red eight a heart or a diamond? Diamond. It was a diamond. And uh, just, just kind of isolate everything for me. Could you hold your hand up? Just be my table. Perfect. All right. A little bit closer. Yeah, that's going to go there. All right. The black eight, was it a spade or a club? The black eight was a spade. It was a spade. Okay. I think you're good. I think you're good. All right. The last question is... Um, why had a pair of court cards? Court cards are either jacks, queens, or kings. Were they jacks, queens, or kings? Kings. They were kings. The king of clubs and the king of hearts both blew back, like the eights are. Correct. But I guess the real question is if I have the two kings in my hand, that means that you have what in yours? Don't do this. 
What would you say? Two eights. It should be, unless I was really good at what I did, which would mean I would have the two eights in my hand, and you would have what? Get the fuck <laughs> out of here, man. What? <laughs> Dude, that's crazy, because when you did that, I don't know what you did, but I felt something in my hand. It was the so magic. Slightly. That's crazy. <laughs> That's insane, dude. What? Wow, that was that was crazy, man. So, in doing magic for this long, what are what are some some key things that you've learned from doing magic? Like, what are like for, for somebody that wants to get in magic? What would you recommend to them to start? Ooh, uh, books. Okay. Books are a hundred percent the way to go because I think people's problem nowadays in learning magic, uh, which is a peak interest in, in, in this generation because magic's been called a, a, a dying art for years and years and years. Yeah. I've heard um, that. and then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, in the past 10 years, you have these movies that now you see me movies, right. um, you have America's got talent, you know, there's been two magicians who have won that and, you know, actually won the show and got that million, million dollar contract. Mm -hmm. Um, just in the past couple of years, it was Matt Franco and, uh, Shin Lim. So, you know, it's, it's definitely piquing people's interest more than ever, I think. And with the generation that we live in, we have knowledge to everything readily available, uh, right. which is Google and YouTube. <laughs> right. Exactly. So everybody runs to YouTube to learn a magic trick. Mm -hmm. Like I hear all the time when I'm doing magic, I'll do a trick and it'll, it'll really fool somebody and they'll be like, oh, I'm going to YouTube that later. Uh, mm -hmm. Which doesn't work because, you know, 99% 99 of the material that I perform, I've created. Uh, nice. Be because, like, magic's like music. You learn in music, you learn the notes, the scales, the chords. Mm -hmm. And then if you're an artist, you can make your own songs. No one's ever thought to put those scales and chords into this form before. It's right. a new song. Okay. Magic's the same way. You learn on the sleight of hand, and uh, you can then put those pieces of sleight of hand into a new format. Okay. Okay. Um, when you go to YouTube, you're learning tricks that you learn by the click of a button. So if you fool somebody with that trick, they could learn that secret just by clicking as well. Mm. So uh, to answer your question, in a shorter sense, I guess, it's books. Yeah, because nobody reads anymore. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Now, yeah. do you feel like um, like the fact that nobody reads a problem or do you think that introducing like audio books, is that like a, a good alternative too, or? What's your opinion on that? Um, as far as audiobooks goes, I think, I think learning magic, I think that people go to YouTube for magic because mm -hmm. it's much easier to learn it with that visual representation. Right. Whereas in books, these old magic books, uh, you know what I mean, that are not currently being printed but are still just laying around everywhere, um, you know, that you, you can find. Mm. Um, I'll even give you a suggestion um, before we're done. Okay. But, um, they have like illustrations, like hand drawn illustrations, and they're good, but it it really helps, you know, when you mm -hmm. can see somebody do the trick that you want to do. It it, it helps you learn, you know. Right. I mean, I personally am a visual learner, so I know that, that it helps me. Um, the the problem with that is not only you're learning learning a trick that somebody else could go and learn like that, but when you see somebody else do a trick, nine times out of ten, you're gonna learn it and do it the exact same way that they did it. Mm. Which is really where we get into it being cookie cutter. Right. You know what I mean? Everything's just the exact same. Nobody throws their own spin on it. Nobody puts their heart or personality into it. It's just, mm -hmm. this is the one way it's done. In their mind. Okay. Now, do you, do you feel like, personally, people that go and try to, to solve the magic, do you feel like that kind of ruins it a little bit in the sense that they're trying to ruin the mystery of, of everything because I, I feel like there is that that satisfaction that comes from the fact that it's a mystery and you have no idea and it just perplexes you because you've never seen it before definitely okay. definitely um when when people watch magic they do they do one of two things they mm. uh they either watch it and they believe that it's real magic which love those people right or they look at it and they turn it into a puzzle and they need to figure out how this puzzle came about mm -hmm. which which i equally love those people as well because if I didn't do magic, I would be that person. I mean, mm. I think I, I do magic because I want to know, you know, I want to be able to reverse engineer things and know how things are happening, you know? Right. Um, so as far as watching magic from, you know, an individual standpoint, I think what they should do is they should let it be magic because right. it gets into the term suspending your disbelief, mm -hmm. which means even though you know that it's not real, even though you know that there's something going on somewhere you should just let it be magic. It's kind of, it's like when you go to the movie theater 
and you're watching old reference like Titanic, all right? Okay. Yeah. And Jack is in the water and he lets go of the hand and he flows down to the bottom. You're not like that didn't happen because that's Leonardo DiCaprio. And right, right. Still, you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you're like, oh my God, he died. You know, right. you know that it's not real, but you're in that moment. Mm-hmm. You know, so. That's funny you say that. I saw a meme they had um the Titanic scene and they had like the platform and they like showed how both of them could have fit on that same platform yeah. in all different ways. <laughs> or like he didn't have to let go. So yeah. that's, that's funny you say that. And in, in a sense, it's kind of like wrestling too, right? Because wrestling, everybody knows it. Wrestling yeah. isn't real to an extent. Obviously, they take some type of damage you know Mm -hmm. because you have wrestlers that have um dramatic brain injury and things like that but i mean to an extent it's still staged Mm -hmm. the outcome is typically predetermined all that stuff but you go in there for the entertainment you go in there with the with the intent that this is something to entertain me this is something that i enjoy seeing because you know i don't know what's going to happen even though they might know what's going to happen i don't yeah they know it's not real but they like the story right exactly same thing okay sweet so do you have people that just come up to you like randomly like, hey, you show me a magic trick or like, I guess it depends on your popularity, obviously, you know, yeah. and you're pretty well known in the area to, mm-hmm. you know, um, you're, you're on Virginia Beach side, correct? Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're pretty well known in the area. So yeah. I mean, people just see you and they're like, hey, you do a magic trick for me or? Absolutely. All the time. So do you have, do you all have this, time. you always strapped with the, with the magic? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, okay. um, so there was a while where I, I didn't like that. Mm-hmm. So I would intentionally leave the house with nothing without right. cards or coins or anything, mm-hmm. which really doesn't do anything because I could do, I could use your stuff and do magic with it. Right. Um, but it, but in my mind it was an easy excuse. Like I don't have anything, can't show you anything today. Mm-hmm. But, um, but then I got to the point where it started happening so frequently and I, I don't, I don't enjoy, you know, turning people down. I think, I think it's cool. Like if, if you recognize me out in public and you want to see a magic trick, like that's awesome. You know, thanks right. for, thanks for enjoying what I do. Absolutely. So, you know, if, if I can do something that doesn't take too much out of my day, um, and I'll definitely show them something. Okay. I think really what it came down to was I'd be out, I'd be out just trying to enjoy like dinner, um, mm-hmm. uh, with my girl, you know, and you know, people, you know, would come up and, and, and again, that's awesome. Thank you. But I'm a people pleaser. So I'm of course going to be like, yes, let me show you something. Okay. But then, you know, it would, it would take away from our time, her and I's time. So, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. That's when I started leaving stuff at home. Okay. I got you. Dope. So do you have, um, a go-to magic trick that like always never fails like this is this is my my special niche one that I, that I always go to yeah so um i don't think there's a single particular one mm-hmm. but what what i like to do if, if you see me on public you know i'm gonna want to do something that takes under 30 seconds that's quick memorable and um preferably not cliche right mean meaning not a card trick you know i'm gonna want to use your quarter to have you squeeze it and bend it in your hand mm. or uh take something from you and have it you know disappear in minutes in your pocket so something like that oh you you can make something appear in people's pockets <laughs> yeah. oh my god dude that's insane so you're not you're not gonna leave i'm gonna have like my social security number like swiped at the <laughs> no, plane no i'll let you keep your watch i already saw it i like it but okay I'll let you keep hey that oh shit damn <laughs> now i gotta watch this van <laughs> you're gonna leave i'm gonna have a fucking like rugrats watch or something <laughs> in place of it <laughs> it's a g-shock g-shock you know g-shock I, I, you know what we can compromise with the g-shock it is not comparable okay <laughs> <laughs> nah it's not but it's all good man we'll we'll, we'll roll with that so you've been doing match for 17 years man mm-hmm. have you um so obviously, I, I imagine you've seen like, like way back, like Houdini and stuff like that. Like, did you get any kind of influence from those kind of guys, like the older magicians and stuff like that? Um, Even though they're more stage magic, you're more close up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've definitely, I've again going back to books. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? There's not too much, and I go as far to say none uh, video evidence of you know Houdini and all that stuff. Right. So you know, you know, all that is in books. You know, those those legends, and it's great. Mm-hmm. Um, Houdini is actually. You know, everybody, like if I asked you right now, you know how he died? So I heard he died doing a magic trick. Is that correct? Yeah. Which one? Uh, it was He had to escape something and he couldn't escape and he ended up dying. Correct? See, that's what everybody thinks, right? That's what everybody that wasn't thinks. It? it wasn't it, no. Uh, okay. So everybody thinks, and, and that's that's where we get into like the folklore, the legend, mm-hmm. you know? Um, everybody thinks that he was doing the water torture cell. Yes. Where he was. was chained up mm-hmm. in a big... Uh, uh, box of water Mm -hmm. and he had to get out and he drowned Mm -hmm. all right that's again that's uh common misconception with like the general public you know okay what really happened was 
he was he did this bit in his stage show where he was known to be able to take a punch from anybody. Mm-hmm. So he uh, would have guys come up and like hit him in the stomach. And uh, this one time he went to take a hit and he like wasn't ready and he ended up getting what is it? I don't know. Like, like no something idea. got ruptured yeah, yeah, or something yeah, like ha- a... yeah, something happened and he yeah, died from that. Oh, so. Shit. so so it was a result of the magic, but not that specific magic one with the with the water cell. So. Correct. Okay. I don't know how much you could call getting punched in the stomach, man. Yeah, and I was, I was kinda, thinking, I was like, I don't know David if that's Blaney. magic. It's kind of right, David right, Blaney, right. Yeah. yeah, it's just like David Blaine does all those stunts. He he actually right. what Blaine does is he he's actually based his career off of Houdini because Houdini's mm-hmm. known as the best magician ever. Right. Um, but he really, if you really get into the study of it, he really didn't do too much magic. I'm not saying he did none. He did, mm-hmm. but he did escapes. You know, he would travel before TV. He would travel city to city, town to town, and he would do these escapes. You know, where he would have a crane, you know, forklift him up, and he would get out of this or that. And um, and th- and that's definitely how Blaine has made his career because right. it started out as magic, and then if you, if you look back, what happened? All of his things on what it's it's, it's ABC, right? I don't know. Um, I thought I thought Chris. Uh... No, that's A and E. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. But um, but no, he 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 did all of his stuff. Uh, David Blaine, he would do these big stunts. Like he would have mm. a magic show, like an hour long magic show. But then he'd be like, "And this week, I'm gonna throw up frogs." And <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, no, and, and it's funny because he he had that like, "I'm gonna do this," like that that kind of like mm-hmm. I don't want to say pretentious facade, but it was very like, monotone. Very, yeah, yeah, very monotone. I'm do very the most emotionless. Thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do the most amazing thing and and be perfectly straight faced yeah. the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> It's, yeah, that's crazy. So who's your uh, who's your favorite magician, man? Ooh. Um, so none of these are going to be household names. Okay. At all. Like, nobody were, will recognize these names because mm. when, you, when you get down to household names, you know, you have David Blaine, Chris Angel, uh, as of recently, Shin Lim, mm. um, you know, a little bit back, uh, Matt Franco, who else? David Copperfield, if we're talking about, like, our parents' generation. Mm. Um, Lance Burton, also parents' generation. But... I like I like magicians magicians because okay. because like what what those people do is they'll take concepts that we know and they'll like flip the script on us you know like mm-hmm. we'll we'll think we'll know what they're doing because we do something that looks similar but they'll completely flip it so um I don't know a couple a couple underground magicians I really like uh, like Danny G uh, Daniel Garcia great okay. guy um, met him a bunch of times really good guy really humble mm-hmm. um, who else uh, Wayne Houchin another really great guy. Okay. Um, God, if I could list one more, who would I say? Um, Garrett Gar- Garrett Thomas. Okay, and these are all underground magicians, so yeah. they're not like mainstream, like out in the spotlight. They're Correct. Just... I mean, I mean, they're doing magic full time. Mm-hmm. Um, they're making their living doing magic. Right. But you're not gonna see them on TV. Uh, actually, what I mentioned, Daniel Garcia does. He uh, uh, consulted for Blaine. Okay. Uh, for David Blaine, so it was like he was he had you know his hand in the show, but mm-hmm. he didn't want to be the face of it. So mm. that's why they're a little okay. bit more underground. I got you. Okay, that's dope, man. Mm-hmm. So in your in your career of doing magic, have you ever aspired to do anything else or to like expand your magic anywhere else or, or what are your, what are your goals basically? So obviously the magic is is a goal. It's something near and dear to your heart. It's what you're passionate about. Yeah. But do you have anything else that you would like to pursue or anything that could stem from the magic? Uh, um, like magic wise, it doesn't even have to be magic wise, man. Like you know, you could be like you know, I love magic, but I also like you know, IT or I like cars. Okay, so I yeah, can, I can go. You know, cool. No one's ever asked me that. I like that. Okay. Um, yeah, switch it up a little. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so because of the magic, I um. I get put in really cool predicaments. Right. Uh, like my manager called me up one day and he was like, hey, get down to the West End of Town Center. I want you to meet somebody. And I was like, all right, cool. And like I get there and we walk up to the room and it's, it's like Mike Vick. Oh, and, shit. And I'm just like sitting there doing magic for Mike Vick and, and his little crew. And he's like, look at this new chain I got. Anyway, like mm. a, a lot of really cool things like that. Okay. Um, so one of the places that it takes me is, is a lot of into the, into the music industry. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, I mean, it's... It's just being a creative, you know what I mean? They're, the, those are artists in their own sense, you know? Um, so I'm, a, I'm around a, definitely a lot of people who do music, people who produce, people who, you know, all that stuff. So, okay. you know, I've been in the studio a couple times, okay. but... <laughs> Rap a little bit. Gotten in the booth. Yeah, just, I, for fun, you know what I mean? Okay. Like, like I, I know what I am, but mm-hmm. uh, as far as, you know, what, what I do. But it's fun, you know, it's, it's fun to have an outlet to do something. 
Right. Absolutely. And I, and I think a lot of people get drowned out in that when they are looking for fame and they're mm-hmm. looking for money. And they always lose sight of the big picture, which is to do what you love doing. Yeah. To have fun doing what you love doing. Absolutely. And, which is what you do. You know, you love magic. You do magic. It pays your bills. You're living comfortably. But that's not what is important. What's actually important is the fact that you're actually being able to do something that you're passionate about. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So for me, the podcast, for example, you know, I, I enjoy doing I enjoy talking to people, having that connection with genuine people and, and just networking. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's what it is. And it's giving everybody that comes up here a platform to talk about what they do, what they're passionate about, what they love doing. Because a lot of people don't know. Like, on this side of the water... I don't know how popular you are over here, but I mean, a lot of people that are over here on this side of the water kind of stay on this side of the water. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, I know how that goes. The HRBT, like, you know, uh-huh. and, and if everybody in the 757 could attest that, the HRBT is fucking ridiculous, you know, as far as yeah. traffic is concerned. So that's, and, and I appreciate you for coming out and, you know, showing love, man. Cause that's, you know, that's, absolutely. It's definitely huge, man. Absolutely. It's definitely huge. So in regards to your magic again, you've been doing it for 17 years. You do shows all the time. What's your your major market as far as like shows are concerned? Like, where do you find yourself performing most? Yeah, so um, so like on a weekly basis, you mm-hmm. know, if, if someone's trying to find me, I guess, um, what I do again, like on an every night type deal, is is a lot of restaurants. Okay. Um, because because the close up magic fits gorgeously there. Right. Um, because what happens is when you're at a restaurant, I mean, and I'm sure you can attest to this, you go to a restaurant, you order your food, and then there's that 15, 20 minute waiting period where hopefully you're not at the restaurant alone, but, um, <laughs> right. you and the person you're with, you know, are just sitting mm-hmm. there, maybe trying to small talk or maybe just both on your phone doing whatever, sending right. games back and forth to each other, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that like 20 minute period where I can kind of interrupt them. It's like an unasked for interruption that ends up being like a memorable part, memorable part of their evening. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, Thursdays, I'm at like a Plaza's Tech of Fridays, Shore Break Pizza, Saturdays, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, mm. off Sundays, Mondays, and then we hit Tuesday, Wednesday at two different B-dubs locations. I can imagine your magic tricks are further amplified if they're inebriated. <laughs> you could say that. You could say that. It makes <laughs> it, it makes it easier. Right, I'll right. Say it, that. It, yeah. it definitely makes it easier because it's easier to, to trick them, especially if they're drunk because... Their senses aren't 100 percent there, so they yeah. just just caught way off guard. I, can I do. I get offers to do magic at at like bars all the time, you know, because mm. you, you know bars they have like the uh, they'll bring in like a musician, right. and and I turn it down a lot because yes, when I'm at like a restaurant, nobody's getting plastered. All right, right. They are at the bars. All right, and and when I do magic for people who are like way far gone, one they're either gonna heckle the shit out of you. All right. Yeah, just, true. Just be way too handsy, you know, like mm. it makes them disappear. You know, it's bam. Let me see that. You know, they're going to they're like grab. They're going to. Yeah, they're going to yeah. be way too handsy, you know, yeah. way too much. Um, or I just I don't know. I've spent so much time on this little comments that probably shouldn't bother me. You know, it's kind of get to me some, like uh, like, oh, if I wasn't drunk, you wouldn't be able to get me. And it's like I'd be able to get you even better if you weren't drunk. Right. But, you know, so I just I try not to get myself like in those positions. OK, that's smart. I mean, you, yeah. And. and, and I actually talked about this on the podcast yesterday. It's talking about taking risk and, and what's a acceptable risk and things like that. So you assume a certain risk mm-hmm. when you do that. Because, again, you have an image to uphold. You have your name to uphold. So you want to be tactful about what you do as yeah. far as you know promotion, as far as putting yourself out there. Which, again, thank you again for coming out Absolutely. here and doing this. Because like, that's, that's phenomenal, man. I mean, just and, and, and shout out to Phil because he actually... Uh, referred me to you um he has a club line fly fishing co absolutely uh, and yeah yeah so shout out to phil man he, i posted he a picture he just liked it <laughs> okay nice yeah yeah no phil's, phil's cool people man definitely cool people he um and he i mean he got me a lot of connections man he got me like with tim lulee's over at the funny bone okay. in virginia beach so, yeah i don't know have you ever done anything over there um i haven't mm-hmm. um we've definitely like but we myself and them as a business have gone back and forth about it before okay but we haven't ever like we haven't locked anything in yet okay um i i know it's it's in the future right. but again that kind of goes back to i mean i guess i'm pushing for it not as hard because it goes back to people drink at the funny bone pretty heavy yeah no that's true yeah they, they so, go there they get drunk they laugh at the the comedy and stuff which is like good that. which is good like yeah. that's that's what that place is made for that's, I've their, been there. that's their realm that's i've yeah. been there i was just there last week for a show and um nice and it was great it was i, I was drinking heavy so you know like i get it you know mm. but i just i want to make sure everything would work out good right you know? right absolutely so, 2019 we'll see how it goes yeah tbd more to come man definitely so in regards to that um where do you see yourself in 
five years as far as the magic is concerned? Like, do you want to just stay local or do you want to like expand on like a national level or what, what are you, what are you looking for from it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so we talked about how we do the close up stuff mm-hmm. and all that's fun. I do have a stage show that I do. Okay. Um, it's just as far as like a weekly basis, it's not like, yeah, these, there's only so many venues locally, you mm-hmm. know? And if I'm doing the same stage show, which I mean, that's what the majority of performers do, you know, it's not like, you know, yay is going to show up and be like, Hey, I want to do three different venues in one city. Cause it's going to be the same show at each venue. Right. You know? That's why they travel so much. Um, so anyway, I have a stage show that I do and I travel for it. Like I just got back from Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be in New York next week. Um, okay. and it's a good show. It's fun. Um, so I do that. I definitely want to, you know, kind of switch some things up because it's been the same thing that I've been, uh, I've been, I've been, I've been riding with a couple of the same things for a while. So mm-hmm. I, I threw a couple new pieces in there and I, uh, I contacted Carnival recently as oh, far cruises. as, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, as, sweet. as far as doing something for them, just cause I have a bunch of friends who do cruise ship magic mm. and you know, I'm, I'm 25. I think it'd be a, a fun new little oh, yeah. chapter of life to do something like oh, that. Yeah, dude. Have you, have you been on a cruise before? Yeah. Multiple times. Okay. What do you, what are you, what's your opinion on cruise? Cause I've been on a cruise before. And uh, so me personally, yeah. I went, I went through carnival. Um, wasn't a bad experience, but it's just like, you're on this big ass boat. The boat's huge. You see the boat, you're like, oh, this is this is crazy. You know, it's a huge boat. Yeah. But the boat's only been so big. You only, see, I mean, if you're not gambling, you're not drinking, you're not going to the club, it starts to narrow down what you can do on the boat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Over time, and you're stuck on the boat sometimes three days. Sometimes you go on a week long cruise. Yeah. You know. So for me, I'd rather just travel there because like I was on the boat. I was like, man, this this sucks, man. Like not that it sucks, but I was yeah. just like. I've been in, I've been in the club. They the DJ had like the same playlist. I heard Nook if you book like three nights in a row. I was like, man, if I hear Nook if you book one more time, man. So I mean, just me personally, you know, I, nah, I don't like yeah. being confided to like the ship, man. Um, being on a cruise, if I get bored, mm-hmm. look at all those people I can do magic for. True, it's fun. True, Funny it's better shit. for you. Right? Yeah, yeah, I can sit around, drink, enjoy my time, hang out at the pool. You know, mm-hmm. I have a really crazy story for you actually. Since we're talking about cruises, okay. So, um, 2010. Mm-hmm. 2010 and I've been I've probably been on six or seven different carnival cruises I I only go through carnival okay because I like them um right. I can't I don't have an opinion of the other ones but I heard mm-hmm. carnival's good anyway 2010 I I went on a cruise with carnival and the second day that we were at sea it was just we were like you know land nowhere we were just at sea mm-hmm. uh they had an engine fire and what? yeah and all the electricity shut off the plumbing shut off the food in the fridges spoiled so there was no food no plumbing the whole place smelled like shit oh my um God. and there was nothing to do they were they were literally giving drinks away to people like you could be 13 just go and be like yo let me get let me get a mojito they'd be like here you go so oh, they didn't give a shit at that point they were like i don't care wow so they, they had like a cigar lounge that you had to mm. pay for cigars now those cigar doors were open just take them it was wow. so that happened. So um so actually right now, right now, like tomorrow probably, I'm expecting an email from them because they owe me a cruise. Nice. <laughs> so they're giving you your, your reparations for two Yeah, absolutely, in. absolutely. <laughs> okay, nice. That but that didn't like spoil it like for you Not know, at experience all. or anything like that. Not okay. at all. Because I mean every other experience I've had has been so cool. It's right. a lot of fun. Yeah, one one bad apple out of the bunch, pretty yeah. much. If you guys have never been on a cruise before, I think I think everybody should go on a cruise. Oh yeah, no, I think everybody should try it just just to get your own opinion of it and see yeah, if you like it or not. Absolutely. You know? Definitely. I mean I, and I'm I'm a huge advocate for trying new things, you know. If you haven't done it before, definitely go out and try it. Right. You know, you won't know unless you try. Mm-hmm. So and that's that's what opportunities too, you know, like you wouldn't have known you would be good at magic if you didn't try. You exactly. Know? So absolutely. Exactly. So I don't want to take up too much of your time, man. I know we're we're coming up on on three thirty here. Um, okay. Did you have anything else that you wanted to add, man, before we wrap up? No. Okay. Not not really. Oh yeah. Well, where can people find you at social media? What's absolutely. I, I was actually gonna say when he said one more thing, I was gonna say right, let me let me plug let yeah. me plug this somewhere. <laughs> no, I got you. Yeah. So uh, so so all my uh, all my social media is the exact same. It mm. is. Uh, Tony Jones 757. So okay. it's just T O N Y J O N E S 757. That's okay. Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Okay. All that fun stuff. Oh, yeah, man. Awesome. Absolutely. All right, well, hey, I appreciate you coming out again, Absolutely, man. Absolutely, dude. I, I, this is awesome, man. Like, I've, I've never seen this before. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that, man. That was, you know that was dope. Definitely. Hell All yeah. right, 75 Junction now. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you.